This is just an idea. I'm thinking about uh, extend Memento protocol a little bit uh, while Michael is there. So this is the time to uh, talk with the master to see if this actually I'm going on the right direction. Okay. All right. uh, so the title is called the Server Driven Memento Daytime Negotiation uh, UWS case. So what is about this UWS case? Uh, we, we call it uninterruptible web service, service uh, which basically the idea behind this service is um, kind of just something like a UPS type of thing uh, behind a web service. So when you, whenever you have a, a, a web inter interruption, mostly it's a server errors, you will use the uh, transaction web archive as the battery of this UPS. So this is what, what we're trying to do, uh, uh, taking advantage of uh, transactional web archive to help a uh, webmaster uh, to, to get their uh, uptime a little bit better than what they have right now. Uh, so during, uh, so this, this is the system architecture of this, uh, of this system. Uh, this part of all the regular things. So you have uh, three tier servers, you have a front end server, you have an application server, you have a, a, a database. This is usually what the website, uh, web, uh, web services is, is uh, comprised of. And you have a general public just uh, sending requests to the front end server, which is related to application server, do some uh, logic and, and uh, page construction, then uh, the, the response is sent back to, uh, to the user. Uh, what, what we added here is we added a side story uh, uh, web archive, which is uh, um, um, a software that developed at Los Alamos. That's a transactional arc, uh, 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 web archive. Um, so th this, is, this is a Tomcat server plus uh, Berkeley DB. And then there is an Apache module that also comes with it. What this Apache module does is is whenever this front end server has a 200 uh, uh, response, that 200 response, but at the same time when the 200 response is sent back to the user, the 200 uh, um, response is also archived in the, uh, in the side story archive. That way, this side story archive will have every copy, uh, 200 copy of uh, anything this, uh, this web service uh, uh, have had in the history. Then whenever you have an application server error, uh, so this application server send a 500 or 501, that type of response to the application server, normally what happened is uh, that 500, server, uh, uh, 500 error is sent back to you, uh, the user, so you will see an ugly 500 page. Uh, we want to avoid this. We, we avoid this by uh, building another Apache module this module will basically intercept that uh, uh, 500 error and use a memento protocol, send a request to the uh, site archive, uh, site story archive, and grab the most recent archive copy of the same page and use that to serve the end user. And that way, we didn't do uh, we didn't do anything about the application server, but we basically hide the server error from the end user. Uh, logically, uh, your application server has an error, so never think, uh, nothing has changed. So uh, logically, that's right. That's, that's correct. We send the right uh, um, response to the user. Uh, so this is the system architecture. Then I want you to focus on this part. How, um, how an Apache module get the most recent archive of copy uh, from a transaction of web archive. Uh, so uh, this this um, request and response is a typical memento protocol. Uh, if we're doing it uh, the memento way or the typical memento way, uh, this is a two round trip request. First time we send a time gate request to the uh, site story web archive, it will respond with a uh, 302 redirect. And then we send another request and we get the most recent uh, archive that we have to back. Uh, there are other variations. Um, so if you are not very familiar with the Memento protocol, this is the most typical ones. Uh, this actually is a little bit more complicated than what I just showed you. It's a three round trip. First, you send a request to your regular original URI. Uh, will respond with an URI to the time gate. 
Then you send another request to the time gate asking uh, with an accept date time with a time year. Uh, then the time gate will send back a time map which shows you multiple options of uh, these are the mementos we have archived. And then the user agent will send the final request, get the memento back. So as you can see, this typical uh, request and response uh, is fairly, what should I say, chatty. It's fairly chatty. It's three round trips. Um, but usually this doesn't present any problem because these are user agents. Uh, user agents with a browser and waits doesn't matter. Uh, you, you barely notice any waiting. Uh, so isn't a big issue for general use. But it become an issue in our situation. Here, our UWS module, this is the Apache module, in this case is acting as a user agent. So this, this, this is like a, a browser. But again, this Apache module sits inside a web server. This module sits inside the front end server. If this guy is waiting, then your front end server's performance isn't going to be very good. Um, so that's, that's a problem we, we, we're running into. Uh, so we start to think about, well, uh, is there any other ways to deal with it? So we look at the Memento protocol. Uh, the Memento protocol has daytime negotiation, but it also has a pattern for saying, well, if it's unnecessary or it's too expensive, you don't even need to do the daytime uh, negotiation. Just go ask for the memento, you'll get the memento back. Uh, we initially think this is the thing, but uh, again, uh, this is not correct semantically. Uh, the side story archive actually, it stores all the mementos. This is the first thing. Second, uh, this module doesn't know which memento we want. We actually want the most recent memento, but we don't know its URL, we don't know the date time, right? So there still needs to be a negotiation. There still, still needs, so uh, this still needs to know which is the uh, most recent uh, um, memento. Uh, so, so what I think is the date time negotiation still needs to happen, but it does, it should not happen in that chatty way. So uh, that is the reason I went back to HTTP protocol um, looking at the content negotiation. There are various ways of uh, content negotiation. The most common way are, uh, sorry, this one should go first. The called agent uh, driven content negotiation. It's the agent who decides uh, which option you want. Server gives you all the options. Now, user agent, you tell the server, this is the copy I want. This is the so-called uh, agent driven. These are, these are basically from HTTP protocol. Uh, there's a pros and cons. Uh, the cons here is exactly what we're talking about. It's chatty. It needs a second request of the best uh, alternate representation. So uh, there's another option. That's a server-driven content negotiation. In server-driven content negotiation, the selection of the best representation for response is made by the algorithm located in the server. So uh, the server don't even give you an option. I'll just make a decision for you. Mm -hmm. um, so there are counts. Certainly there are counts. Uh, the server does not usually uh, exactly understand what the clients want. And uh, yeah, the, the describing, the, the clients trying to describe what they want. The description is kind of really complicated uh, in, in times, so it's not that easy to describe. Um, and it does com uh, complicate the implementation of region server in times. Um, well, there, there's also this, this thing, this thing could be big. Uh, it, it limits the public cache. So these are all the camps. But go back to our application, actually, I think none of these counts actually matters. Uh, first, uh, it's impossible for the server to accurately de uh, determine what might be the best. What we want is the most recent ar archived uh, memento. Well, just check the time. Uh, it's, not that easy, uh, it's not that difficult to find the most recent one. And having the user agent describe this capability, in our case, we're not, 
we're not uh, describing the capability of display uh, model or something. It's very clear defined uh, um, a capability. That is the what what's the most accepted day time. That's your local time. And it doesn't complicate the region server. That's it's fairly easy. Actually, you, you, you do two round trips. You still the server needs to do the same thing. So it's still very chatty. Uh, uh, it, it still do the same thing. It doesn't complicate the uh, uh, the the implementation of the server. Then we have a, a cache problem. Cache problem in our case actually can be totally uh, masked because. See from here. The response is from here to here. We don't need to cache anything. We don't need to cache anything from here to here. At each time it could be a different thing. So in that case, um, I'm proposing a little extension uh, to the Memento protocol. Let's add a pattern five. Um, so I give you a sample request and response. Uh, sample request is a get. Uh, typical typical request here is a hat. Uh, so I'm just go go ahead ask for the memento. Don't give me anything else. I have the accepted date time here. This is typical. So your the response to this would be having this very accepted time. This actually prevents caching, but that's fine. Uh, this response only goes to the front end server, and the front end server probably will be able to adapt the. Uh, Adapt the header again. Then you put on uh, all kinds of links here. Your time map link. If you have origin, put the origin links here. Time get link. Then actually, I've inserted the whole memento inside here. So I put the whole world in here just for uh, <coughs> uh, just for representation. So uh, I, I think this might be a good idea. So we go ahead and try it. Uh, we we uh, changed the, the implementation of start, start story a little bit. Then did a, a, a little simulation, and here is the simulation results by getting rid of the chatty, uh, uh, the, the chatty uh, request and response processes. We're able to reduce the server load from that module uh, by one fourth to one third, and there's not much increase in terms of uh, the uh, side story server load. So these are the side story server load. If you, uh, these are the uh, CPU usage. So if you compare the height of this to you, there's no um, major increase, but if you compare this to you, this actually increases a lot. So that's what's much. the difference between the, the four graphs again? I didn't get that part. Oh, uh, uh, so uh, these are the uh, UW, UWS module uh, CPU usage. These are the uh, side story. The original module. Yes. So uh, these two happening at the same time. So you see. Uh, there are requests going from here. This starts to increase. Uh, this is, we increase this a little bit. This increases a little bit. So uh, it's the same thing going on there. So basically, what you're comparing is the height of this and height of this, and the height of this and the height of this. So there's no major increase between those two, but there's increase between those two. So this is pattern five. This is pattern uh, is pattern two point three. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Please. Questions for you. How is that different than patterns 1.2 and 1.3 in RFC? RFC uh, 1.2 and 1.3. So RFC 1.2 and 1.3. I believe you still need two round trips, right? No, that's where the, the original resource and the time gate is specific. Uh, are the, are the same resource, and they can send back a 200 response. And the difference is whether or not it has an anonymous uh, memento or a, uh, a separate memento that you note with content location. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I probably need to go back to to check the um, uh, spec and come back. Yeah, to maybe we could take it offline. But I think this seems really similar to 1.1 and 1.2. Now the, the the so the complexity and the chattiness comes from who's responsible for what. And right. the, the worst case scenario is I talk to CNN, um, I don't see what I like, I talk to some independent time gate that knows about a dozen archives and then it redirects me to some random archive. Right. Well not random, but 
So Some there, there's everything. three moving parts there, Definitely. and that's, that's why you need all this. When you move part of it into site story and it kind of knows where stuff is, yeah. that's where you can start to take shortcuts. That's right. And not have to do a 302, you can do a 200 stuff. That only works if you don't have to switch machines. Yeah, and, that's... And, uh, you know, as long as your site story stuff all stays on one logical machine instead of splitting out over multiple machines, then you can play the okay. 200 game. But on first blush, it seems similar to 1.2 and 1.3. Okay, take a look at it. Okay. But I might have missed the details. So mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, good, thank you. Uh, so we 